What's up guys, Silver here with another Halo Master Chief Collection Achievement Guide. This time we're doing part two of our Halo 3 lasso walkthrough. This is Crow's Nest. We're going to start off by jumping down here and grabbing a BR and assault rifle off the rack there. Open this door. I've sped this part up. We're just running through some hallways to start off this mission until we get to the first encounter. And once we do get to that encounter, we're just going to hang back. We're going to activate the door control to open it up and then just hang to the right side of the door and just kind of look to the right side of that crate. Some uh, grunts may move into view and you'll be able to pick them off easily. And we're going to wait for two marine buddies of ours to come up behind us and go into the door first. And they'll just start uh, tearing into the enemies themselves. And they will throw a ton of grenades because uh, the catch skull actually affects them as well. So they start just hucking grenades down the hallway there. And they'll uh, be able to do a lot of damage for you. So you can just kind of hang back safely and let them thin out the, uh, the enemies down there at first. But once the marines move up a little bit, you could actually pop out yourself and just make sure you stay far away from the enemies. You could easily take these guys out with headshots uh, with your BR from all the way back on the other end of the hallway where you're totally safe. So just let the marines kind of push up and distract everybody while you safely hang back. Headshot all the grunts you can, and then once there's no more grunts, you could start working on those jackals. You could take them out with a plasma pistol. You could see I exchanged my assault rifle for a plasma pistol. There's going to be plenty of plasma pistol ammo from all these grunts we just took out and we could actually easily take these jackals out from far away. We could just simply noob combo them from far away, and most of the time they do not dodge. So, especially if you're far away, they will not try to dodge the noob combo, the overcharged plasma pistol. So you could easily just kind of hang back and uh, overcharge it, deploy the overcharge burst, and then that will collapse their shield, and then you can just finish them off with a headshot real quick. One thing you definitely want to watch out for is what just happened in front of me right there. The Marine just threw a frag at the crate right in front of him, and it bounced back towards me. Uh, they have the accuracy of caboose throwing grenades, so you want to definitely keep the marines in front of you. Don't try to run up next to them or in front of them because you might find that they're throwing grenades at you. But you can see I was kind of looking around at the ground there. Once you move past that line on the ground through that doorway, that will spawn in four additional grunts through this doorway along with a brute. So you want to have your battle rifle ready to go, trained on that doorway so you could easily headshot the grunts as they come through and then the Brute will follow. So for this Brute, we're going to overcharge our Plasma Pistol, use this crate for cover, and then we're going to step out. He usually will throw a Spike Grenade of his own, and then we're going to just Plasma Pistol him with an overcharge Burst. We're going to use the time it takes for him to throw his grenade to get close to him. We'll stun him with the Plasma Pistol Charge, and then we'll have even more time to wrap up around behind him, and then we can easily just back smack him to get full shield, and also to just kill him easily. And once you've killed all the enemies in this hallway, we're going to look down through this doorway into this hallway. There's going to be a bunch of grunts along with some jackals that are wielding carbines. So you want to headshot those guys with your battle rifle. And if you don't have any battle rifle left, there's going to be more down at the other end of the hallway where we came from. So I'll show you that in a second. But you just want to take these guys out with headshots. You want to kind of slowly inch your way so you could barely see one of them and take them out. You don't want to be able to be seen by all of them at once because they could shoot you all at the same time while well, you could only really focus on one at a time. So just kind of inch your way out so you could see one, headshot them, and then continue doing that. Duck behind cover as you need to because the carbine can kill you pretty quickly if you have no shield. And we're just going to go back here, try to find the best plasma pistol, the one that has the most ammo in it. And we're also going to make sure that we look for this battle rifle sitting on the ground. This battle rifle comes from one of the marines that's in that warthog that blows up as soon as you open the doorway to this area. So it could be pretty much anywhere in this general area. Uh, it's not always in the same spot because there's the explosion with the warthog going off. So take a look around, see if you could find it. If not, no worries, just move ahead. You may have already picked it up, actually, without even knowing it earlier. But we're going to move ahead here, and you want to switch to your plasma grenades. There's a bunch of plasma grenades around here from all the grunts we killed, so make sure you have full plasma grenades, and you want to switch to plasma grenades, and when you switch between grenade types, you can actually hear a difference. There's actually a unique sound effect for selecting each type of grenade. So, so switch to plasma grenades before moving into here because you get a checkpoint here, and you don't want to have to keep switching every single time. And we're just going to move up here to the left there's a set of stairs we're going to jump up these and we're going to jump up to the catwalk up here kill whatever enemies you want on the way up here but don't stop you want to run and gun and then punch out this window and kill the three grunts down on the left over there and then we're going to go over here and do the same thing punch out this window there's going to be three grunts down on the right side over here so we're going to kill those and then we're going to reload our br and pick up ammo on the rack here you can see there's some brs on the wall so now we have a full br and we have a plasma pistol as well we're going to jump down through this window and run up the right side of this map there's enemies behind us but they're being distracted by the marines so just let the marines mop those guys up we're going to run to the right side switch to your plasma pistol so we have a plasma pistol out. We have our plasma grenade selected and we're going to run up to this far right crate. We're going to turn to the left and then as soon as we see the first phantom coming to our field of view, we're going to cut into the right and go to this light gray cement. We're going to jump up and smack the backside of the phantom for shields. We're going to charge our plasma pistol and shoot the brute as he comes down and stick his right foot and then we're going to back up and throw another plasma grenade and we're going to jump over these crates so the phantom doesn't shoot at us with his turret. Sometimes you kill more than others with those plasma grenades. 
but you should at least be able to kill the brute that way, which will cause any of the surviving jackals or grunts to scatter. And then you could quickly finish off any surviving grunts or jackals with some headshots, and you want to stay behind the safety of these crates until both of the phantoms have left. And once those phantoms have left, you want to grab a fresh plasma pistol from one of those enemies you just killed, and also you want to replenish your plasma grenade supply. And once you've done that, you want to move back behind these crates because there's going to be another phantom that comes in with even more reinforcements. So we want to be ready for those. So we're going to be back behind this phantom and we're going to switch to our BR so we can headshot these three grunts who are the first to come down. And then you want to switch to your plasma pistol real quick because the next enemy that comes down is a brute shot wielding brute. Then there's going to be two more brutes that are dropped off. One uh, happened to fall down into that hole in the ground. And if you're low on shield, you could always jump up and smack the back of the phantom again to get that shield to go back up. And then we'll go back behind these crates as the phantom leaves and we'll be safe from the turret on the front. The turret can't shoot backwards. It can only shoot in front of the phantom. So if you're behind the phantom, you're safe. And remember that you always want to be looking out for a better plasma pistol so you don't run out at any point, especially between waves of uh, phantom drops because you have a decent amount of time to run around and grab one off one of the dead grunts. But this final phantom is coming in now. There's three grunts at first, so headshot those guys, followed by a brute shot brute with three jackals. So we're going to noob combo this brute and we could throw a plasma grenade down where these jackals landed, and hopefully we could take out some of those jackals quickly, and uh, we'll headshot the brute to finish him off. The final enemies that come out of the phantom are three grunts, so we could finish those guys off quickly with a headshot, and you probably won't be able to kill all of those enemies. You can see I didn't kill all those enemies quickly. There's still some alive, but uh, you should be able to kill a good amount of them quickly, and then there's a bunch of marines still alive. The upside of this fairly aggressive strategy is your A, killing enemies quickly as they spawn so they don't have time to build up their forces and overwhelm you, but B, we're basically sandwiching them in between us and the Marines that are still on the other side of the map where we entered this area. So they're not all facing you. They're very distracted by the Marines who are throwing grenades into the middle of their formation. So it makes them a lot easier to deal with when they don't know which way to turn a lot of the time. And the next thing we're going to do now that we've cleared out this whole area is grab a deployable cover. It is a piece of equipment you could use. And there's three right here up towards where you entered this area from. You can see I can't pick them up. That means I have something already. Looks like I grabbed a bubble shield from killing all those brutes at some point. But uh, deploy that, and then we'll be able to grab a deployable cover. And then we'll jump up here, make sure we're getting uh, full BR. So we have full BR now. We have a plasma pistol, and we have a deployable cover for our equipment, which is going to come into play in the next section. So we're going to move back the way we came towards the beginning of the mission. I'm going to skip ahead in a little bit to speed things up. But back here, I'm going to exchange my plasma pistol for a brute shot. So this brute shot we killed earlier in the mission is still here. We'll be able to grab that from that dead brute right there, and we'll speed this part up because uh, we were just uh, basically going back through these halls that we know and love already. Looks like I had a needler at the end there instead of a plasma pistol, but that's all right. We have a brute shot and a BR right now and deployable cover. We're going to come around the corner, and I'm going to aim my brute shot at this guy. So when he gets lifted up by the drone, I just shoot the Marine right when that happens, and then I just back up. And by doing that, the splash damage kills the bugger that's picking him up but it doesn't really do much damage to the Marine, actually. So the Marine survives, we kill the bugger real quick, and then I just back up and allow all these guys to take out these buggers. So these guys are capable of killing all the buggers in this section, but they don't do it all the time. So you may end up having to actually finish off whatever buggers remain. So we're going to do that by going over to the left here. There's a turret set up. We're going to put down the deployable cover right in front of it. And a characteristic of this deployable cover that not everyone knows about is you could actually shoot through it with human weapons from the backside here. So you can see that's exactly what I'm doing with this human turret and really just savage these buggers. They don't really have much health at all. They only take two or three shots or something super low with this turret. So uh, you could get a lot of kills really quickly and get a lot of points. You can see I'm getting a bunch of killing airs over there. And you could actually get a lot more killing airs if you went over here immediately. Uh, I waited a little bit for the Marines to take out a bunch of these guys, but you could actually fill up your whole screen with killing airs. It's pretty insane looking. But we're going to jump down here now that we've killed most of them. There could still be some alive in hiding, but we're going to go back here first to get some BR ammo. There's a big crate of BR right here. And we're going to keep our brute shot for now, even if it's empty, because we're going to switch to a full plasma pistol. All these ones on the ground are low on ammo because they were dropped by buggers. Hit your equipment button to get rid of any equipment you might be carrying. But up ahead here, we're going to do a little bit of a checkpoint manipulation. You don't get a checkpoint when you're meleeing, so we're just going to keep hitting melee as fast as we can as we walk forward here. You can see I'm on this first ascending ramp, and as soon as you get down to that first platform here, this first level platform, you'll hit a load zone and then get a checkpoint, but we don't want that checkpoint. So we're going to melee continuously as we open this door, keep meleeing, jump over this, keep meleeing, jump over this, make sure you don't grab a grav lift accidentally on the right, duck into the left and grab the fully charged plasma pistol on the ground, come back into the center and immediately start noob comboing the hammer chieftain. He may turn for an assassination like so, or his helmet may pop off and allow you the headshot. 
Grab his equipment ASAP and activate it. Quickly exchange your BR for his hammer and go to the next section. You may need to smack some brutes out of the doorway here with the hammer, but try to minimize its use one or two smacks max. We want to save the hammer for later. But that was a lot of information, a lot of things you need to do really quickly. So let's play it back and slow it down here. We're back in the bugger room before we went to that brute filled room. At this point, you want to hit your equipment button to ensure that you don't have any equipment that you're carrying. This will enable you to grab the Chieftain's invincibility as fast as possible once he drops it so you can activate it as quickly as possible. And now we're moving up to this door and I like to pause on this first ramp here before that load zone because we want to get a checkpoint ideally right before the load zone. And once we do cross into the load zone, remember we want to start hitting melee as fast as possible to ensure we don't get a checkpoint after the load zone. The reason for this is sometimes the Brute Chieftain will carry a flare instead of invincibility. And if you get a checkpoint after he spawns in, he will always have the same thing. So it'll probably be okay because he usually has invincibility. But if you get bad RNG and he has a flare, then he's going to always have a flare when you go back to that last checkpoint. So from the beginning of the load zone until you grab the plasma pistol, keep hitting melee as fast as you can. So we're hitting melee right now. We're moving forward. We're opening the door. We're going to jump over this. You can see there's some grav lifts down to the right. Make sure you don't pick one of those up accidentally because, again, we don't want to have any equipment so we can pick up that invincibility as fast as possible. Cut into the left. You can see there's a plasma pistol by a dead grunt. Switch out your empty brute shot for that. Immediately charge it so you can start in on this brute chieftain as fast as possible. As you're shooting him as fast as you can with the battle rifle in the head, he may lose his helmet and you could land a headshot. Other times he turns around and you could back smack him like this. Immediately when he dies, you want to walk over him and hit the equipment button so you could activate the invincibility as fast as possible. And you also want to switch out your battle rifle you were using for his hammer. So you're doing two things at once basically, activating that invincibility and exchanging your BR for a hammer. So now you have a hammer and a mostly charged plasma pistol and we're going to move into the next section. As you go down into this hole here, a bugger tends to pop up so you could try to melee him as you go down. Don't get distracted though, your priority is to as quickly as possible go down this hole here. Turn to the left as you descend and we'll start walking forward as Cortana slows us down here. As I walk past these tubes on the left and right, you can see there's buggers that fly in between and you could actually just melee and a lot of times the buggers happen to come out right as you're passing by them. So just do that, just melee as you go past those pipes and there's a decent chance you'll land a kill and more importantly you'll get your shield back up if you need to. But now we've dropped down here and we open the door, which is going to A, get us a checkpoint, but B, make the buggers not shoot at us anymore. And we want to press this fencing up against the wall here so it's flush up against the wall, nice and flat. But if you take a step back, you could actually see that parts of this fence is broken. There's some missing pieces. Part of the grid is kind of uh, broken off. And the one that we're most interested in is the one that's most near the center. So just take a step back and then you could see that the one a little bit to the right of center is the one that we're most interested in. So I'm going to center myself on this fence. And then if I look to the right, I'll see that there's that missing piece in the fence right there. So I'm going to look to the left, and uh, there's this kind of cross-section of fencing kind of forming a plus sign on my screen right now that I'm zoomed in. And you can see the corners of the plus sign are not 90 degrees. There's kind of a little bit of a 45 degree angle in those corners. And I like to place my crosshair on the top of that top left 45 degree angle. It may be a little confusing, but you can see here I placed a red dot where I'm actually looking in the game. Obviously blinds on so you can't see my crosshair, so I inserted this little uh, red dot in here in post, quote unquote, crazy budget here we have for special effects. And then from this position, I'm going to just simply move my camera to the right. So I'm not going to move it up or down. It's going to go along this line. I'm not going to move my character so my feet aren't going to move at all. Just my camera is going to pan to the right a little bit. So now my reticle is firmly centered right there in the middle of that area, and it's about the height of the top of those top 45 degree angles. So at that point, once I'm lined up, I'm going to jump and swing the hammer right after I jump. That will propel you across the chasm here. And you could slow yourself down by turning around and swinging your hammer as you're about to land over here as well. If you feel like you're going too fast and you're going to splatter yourself. And you could go up the elevator to go to the next part of the mission, or you could decide to go into the barracks, which is the part we just skipped. Why am I doing this, you might be wondering. It is because we could actually activate these doors from the opposite side go in. There's not going to be any enemies in this final part because we didn't spawn them in. And we could actually get a regen field to ensure that we have a full shield going into the next section of the mission. So up ahead here, you can see there's some brutes spawned in. This is because we opened the door before doing the hammer jump. But around the corner, and you're going to see this regen field just sitting on the ground, immediately double back, and we're going to run away from these guys. You can see I'm kind of zigzagging my way back. I'm not running away from them in a straight line because that is a very easy target. So uh, just kind of zigzag your way in between all this uh, geometry, all these stairways and columns and pieces of uh, cover here. And then once we're over here in the final part, there's no enemies. They don't spawn in or anything. Once you're safe, you could throw down the regen shield, ensure you have full shield, 
and then we could go up the elevator here. And you always get a checkpoint after you do the hammer jump once you land over here safely. So you don't have to worry about going in there and getting the regen and then possibly dying and then having to do the hammer jump again. You'll get a checkpoint after the hammer jump and then you could go get that regen safely. And uh, obviously if you die, you could hit uh, start, save, and quit and resume if you're playing solo. If you're playing co-op, it's not as much of an issue, of course. We're going to go up this elevator, and you could jump out these uh, windows here, these gaps towards the right that I was looking at, which is what you would want to do for a speed run, but you don't actually get a checkpoint when you do that. So we want to go out this door that the game wants us to go out of. So wait for this door to open up, and right when these doors open, you want to immediately go down these stairs, jump on the crate, and jump onto the pelican, because the pelican leaves pretty quickly, and we want to use this pelican to jump up on top of this rooftop here, and we could get a really good vantage point. And this is why we wanted a mostly full plasma pistol, because we could noob combo all these guys from up top here. And you may be wondering how we're going to do that with a hammer, but uh, we have a battle rifle right in here for us. So we're going to noob those three guys, take down their shields. You'll probably notice that there's a fourth brute down there. He's stuck on a railing. He's the furthest one from me. And uh, you want to just ignore him and just focus on these three guys. Take down their three shields and then switch to the BR. So you have a BR and a hammer. Jump up top here. As soon as you kill two of those brutes down there, you're going to find that there's brutes that spawn behind you here. Sometimes one of the brutes may kill himself. So don't be surprised if you only kill one and then find these guys spawning here. Turns out that's what happened this time around. You immediately want to turn around. I like to stick one with a spike grenade if I can. And then I just go to town on these guys with a hammer. So as soon as they pop up, just smack them with a the hammer. Keep your shield up. Take their shield down. And it's really a game of intense whack-a-mole happening here. And uh, just be uh, careful because some could be hiding down here. They like to go into the building we're standing on the roof of sometimes. But uh, once we're done with the hammer, we could switch back to the plasma pistol. And we'll just clean these guys up. And you may find that you're able to take out all of these guys with the noob combo. But you may run out of plasma pistols. So if that happens, don't worry. We have a backup plan in case that happens to you. But just try to noob combo as many brutes as possible. And then we'll move on to plan B if and when we need to. I'll show you how to do that here. And you can see there is the final wave of brutes that come in. The final wave of reinforcements come in from the bottom left where those guys are right now. I picked up that trip mine from the brutes that spawned up here with me. Uh, because these guys, these jetpack brutes in this area tend to carry a lot of trip mines. So watch out for that. You may accidentally pick one up and you may accidentally find yourself walking over one that's active if they decide to deploy one. So keep your ears open too when you're near one. There is actually a sound associated with it. So you'll know you're near one if you could hear it. So we're going to move in here now. And what we're going to do, since we're out of plasma pistol, like I mentioned, this is plan B. We're going to grab one of the active camos. We want to make sure we save at least one for one of the final sections, but we could use one here because we have an extra. Cloak yourself while you're up on the roof, and then you could step off, and we're going to go up behind these guys and assassinate them. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. That failed right there, so I'm going to stick him. And uh, this guy has no shield, so I'm just going to headshot him real quick. This guy, I'm going to decide to stick right off the bat, and that failed, so I decided to backsmack him. Sometimes you backsmack him, and it doesn't work, so you stick him. Sometimes you stick him, and it doesn't work, so you backsmack him. We got all the ways you could kill people in here, and we got this last guy here, the guy on the railing, not contributing at all, really, to either side. So I'll just stick him real quick, and we're going to get our shield back up, even if you have no shield at this point. Just stick that guy, just get him over with, because you can knock him off the railing accidentally with some kind of ghost assassination like you saw i was right up behind the backside of that guy uh the first one i tried to assassinate and it just did not work so you don't want to knock him off the railing and have him you know turn around and smack you so just go up here there's a regenerator you can see i just activated it that will ensure you have a full shield going into the final section or one of the final sections but you want to make sure you grab that other camo before you move to the next section so ensure you have the camo Grab a fresh plasma pistol from one of these drones that Johnson killed for you, and we're going to move to the next section. And even if you didn't have that regenerator to get your shield all the way up at the end of that, we could actually just go up behind this uh, guy on the turret here, backsmack him, get your shield all the way up, and then we'll take on these guys. We could headshot these guys from far away, and uh, we could take out that guy on the turret as well. And behind that grunt that was on the turret that we meleeed, there is a crate of ammo. So if for whatever reason you left your battle rifle behind, there is more battle rifle in this crate here. So grab that. Uh, if you brought your BR with you, even better because you have even more BR ammo now. So as you approach this corner, you want to take out those fusion cores before you get up close to them. Obviously, if a bunch of grenades are coming in and causing chain reactions, you don't want the fusion cores to be a part of them. But you just want to duck around the corner here and slowly take these guys out with headshots. We're using the same strategy we did in the first encounter in the beginning of this mission, which is really just hang back with a battle rifle, take out the grunts uh, for the jackals, you could take them out last if you want to because they have their shields up. They're a little tougher to deal with. It takes longer to take one jackal out than a bunch of grunts. Uh, so for the jackals, again, we're going to stay far away. And we're just going to noob combo them from far away because they tend to not dodge those. And then you can just quickly headshot them. 
for the grunts, uh, just headshot them because nothing's stopping you unless they're behind something. Just wait for them to pop out. And the turrets you want to prioritize because those dish out a lot of firepower really quickly. And they also act as a kind of a trap for the grunts because you know where they're going to be. Just kind of keep your eye on the turrets and just headshot them as they get on the turret. Another grunt will decide to hop on the turret. They tend to always want the turrets manned, so they'll always just keep going at the turret, and it makes it really easy to just kind of predict where they're going to move and where they're going to go. But as soon as you've cleared out the majority of the enemies back there, you could always go back to this crate and grab some more BR ammo to finish off the remainder of the enemies back there, and we're going to make our way down there now. There's going to be two deployable covers that we're going to set up. There's uh, two beam rifle jackals that could be a little annoying at the end here, but we could actually deal with them very easily. I didn't even know these deployable covers existed until very recently, so I was very surprised to find them just sitting there, just waiting for me to use them for, what is it, uh, 13 years now? I have not used them until recently. My god. Check these turrets. You'll basically be able to know if there's any grunts left if these turrets are manned or not, because like we mentioned, the grunts run at the turrets like moths to a flame, so check the turrets. Once everyone is dead except for the beam rifle jackals, I like to jump on top of this crate, which is a safe place, and then you can see there's a deployable cover down into the right, so I'm going to grab that, and I'm also going to use the one that's behind the turret right there, so I'm going to use this, exchange it for your camo, deploy it right about here, pick up the second one, and then deploy that as well. Make sure you don't accidentally use the camo. Look around you, make sure the camo is on the ground so you don't accidentally use it right here. And now you have a double deployable cover that you could shoot through, but the jackals cannot get through. Might be a little bit of overkill, but better safe than sorry. Remember, you can only shoot through this thing with human bullets, so the battle rifle is totally fine, but if you're trying to use a plasma pistol or something like that, that will not work. So make sure you go back, grab the camo, and we'll make our way to one of the final sections here in this mission. We're going to go up this ramp and we're going to find that we have to arm a bomb, or rearm the bomb. So you're going to see me grab a plasma pistol, which you don't need to do, but it is a good idea to cloak yourself as you pass the plasma pistol in that room. So use that as a marker, cloak yourself right before passing that plasma pistol, and then we're going to move in here, activate the bomb, and we're immediately going to double back and jump down here into the stairwell. And as we go down here, we're going to turn to the right, the door's going to open up, there's going to be three grunts immediately in front of the doorway here, along with a bunch of grunts running around in this room in general. Uh, you could just ignore them and run past them. There are two carbine-wielding jackals over here, so you could take those guys on so you don't uh, take any uh, damage. And then you could smack a grunt to regen any shield you need. Grab the BR ammo from that crate I just went to, and we'll have full BR for the next section. I'm going to skip ahead here. We are now at the uh, hallway here where the first encounter was. There's a bunch of drones flying overhead along with a bunch of grunts. The drones won't shoot at you and the grunts are kind of running away at first, so you could easily get to the section where I am right now and just kind of hang back like we were in the first encounter where we just were all the way back at the end of the hall and we easily took these guys out with a battle rifle. You could try to just run past them, which is a totally viable option, and it does work a lot of the time, but there is some RNG involved. And with a full BR, I feel like it's just easier for most people to just kind of hang back and calmly headshot a bunch of grunts instead of just running past them and hoping that a barrage of nades doesn't land at their feet. So uh, as you make your way down this hallway, be aware of any stray grunts that may be hiding behind things like he was there. We'll arrive at the hangar and there's a bunch of grunts running around. So if you get one that crosses your path, you could smack them for shield. But be aware that eventually they will start shooting at you. So you just want to smack them if they're in your way. But if not, just keep running. I like to go down the middle of the map here and go down to the lower level so I avoid most of the jackal fire because the jackals are not running around. They will shoot at you. Pop up here and be ready with an overcharged plasma pistol because a lot of the time there is a jackal nearby. So I like to noob combo him, which will get him to stop shooting at me and run away so I could safely get to the elevator here. Smack any grunts that may be in your way for fun or for shields. Make your way into this elevator, activate the control, and it will trigger the final sequence. That is the end of Crow's Nest. I will see you next time when we tackle Savo Highway. Thanks for watching guys, if you found that video helpful be sure to click on the scorpion icon to subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. You could also check out some related guides by clicking on the videos on screen and you can find links in the description for other social media links of mine. Stay tuned for more Halo guides and I'll see you in the next one.